Yeah. 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 So right out of the gate, first album, you get it, pull it out. You've got this uh, this comic strip in here with a uh, with a robot. Interesting. I put the album in, and um, and then uh, right out of the, it's a uh, Mongo right out of the gate. Uh, let me tell you a story about a robot man. So, uh, enlighten me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's on me. Oh, uh, yes. I'm pretty prophetic, you know, when we, uh, <laughs> I don't know, bullshit. I don't know, we like robots and destruction and silly things, and you can't take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're talking about the artwork there. So that's all done by a fantastic artist named Tim Doyle mm -hmm. at Nakatomi Inc. Dot com, I think. Um, he's the shit. You should check him out. He got number one artist of the year in the Chronicle a couple years ago. He's blowing up all over the world. But so he did an eight page comic book in there as the insert for that first album. And um, so it's basically two robots, which we call Meganaut and Mongo is the evil robot. So that's kind of where the other song came, the title song came for. It's just kind of tongue in cheek writing a song about the record or something. Okay. About an evil robot that destroys things. <laughs> also, <laughs> that pretty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have a uh, anyone in the band in particular into comics or uh, animation in general? Not me. No, I really not. don't I like. Mean, we're, no. we're all giant children <laughs> at heart, so I like robots and cartoons and destruction. But right? we're not like big. We're more into vinyl and guitars and stuff than comic books, I would say. Okay, well, so... And drinking. But, <laughs> speaking of geeks, uh, Jeff, you've always, been, uh, you've always been technically present. As a matter of fact, you started as uh, an audio engineer and actually engineered the first album, correct? Uh, yeah, I did it with uh, a, a great friend of mine, Barrett Walton. We did it over at Infinity Recording Studios. We did it together, and then I mixed it myself, and then we had... Uh, Howie Weinberg in New York, master it, who, great guy, did awesome work. Great. Do you find that uh, having that education and experience on the technical side of things uh, influences the band in any particular direction? Or? Oh, I'm sure it has. You know, spending, you can't spend hundreds, of, as you know, you can't spend hundreds and hundreds of hours in recording studios and not have it rub off. I think that's probably one reason my songs are so concise and I trim the fat and we keep everything really tight and we don't milk things for a lot. It's probably from my years of being in the studio and not wanting to milk things and not, you know, wanting to get to the point and get out and be it as quickly and methodically as possible. Absolutely. <laughs> well, this time around, you hired someone and uh, this is the end result. Yes. We have uh, more better Meganaut Volume One, uh, which is great. This is the this is the vinyl version, which I've been fortunate enough to receive <laughs> from you guys, and this is actually really cool. Y'all did the screen printing for each of these sleeves, correct? Yes, yes. we did. <laughs> That's the. I don't think Coco ever showed up, did you? No. Okay, so the three of us did. He <laughs> sat there for two days, text. lived in this guy's <laughs> and, uh, freaking garage, yeah. uh, sweating our balls off in the Texas summer. Screen print, learning how to screen one. print. <laughs> learning how to screen print. Essentially, we'd all done little things before, but never anything of this fucking grandiose. We did 500 as a limited run. We're never doing it again, so we'll try to get one of these because we're going to hire people to do this shit. But you can see, and if you'll see some of them have a little smudge here or there, a drop of sweat, that's, that's from us sweating our asses out. DNA. That is, that is our <laughs> DNA. You can clone us clone. from our vinyl. If they're, we're uh, so they're all original works. They are Each one original is, works. Uh, and let me say the artwork was done by Jim Sun, who's another fantastic artist, good friend of ours. Um, and like you said, this, we did this at Yellow Dog Recording Studios here in Austin with Dave Percival. Mm -hmm. And he's brilliant, and that studio is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a fantastic experience for all of us. We got to use a bunch of really nice oh, yeah. gear and yeah. awesome stuff. <laughs> That's great. And we did it live in two days. Really? The entire record, two yeah. days. So a little bit quicker than the first time. <laughs> <laughs> By about oh my God. a year. A year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's nice, like you said, being an engineer, it's nice to not record and mix your own album. I don't know that I want to do that again with our stuff. You're too hands-on and you lose 
this perspective with the whole thing, I, I feel. We should so, just be in there playing. Yeah, we know, should. And writing music. And, and we wanted, yeah, we wanted to sound like a band, so we went in and did an album as a band. Yeah. And with a guy like Dave Percival, I, you, can, uh, you can just be a <laughs> Yeah, Dave is a fantastic artist. engineer. Yeah. Any idea you might have, he's done it. Here, go, do this. All right, and it's done, and it's exactly what you were wanting. You're like, okay. And it's nice having that kind of experience kind of at the reins, you know, to just kind of, okay, I can just be a musician and just play. It was weird being in a studio and not having to wrap cables and shit. <laughs> it kind of threw me for a loop. Well, the fact that you were able to focus on, on playing and the performance side of things certainly comes through in the record. I mean, the record's it's hard, it's fierce, it is exactly what you'd expect uh, Meganaut to be. And uh, <laughs> I have worked with a lot of bands this summer, and uh, in doing so, I don't often get the chance to, to grab the record and, and listen to it over and over. This record, on the other hand, has, um, has not left my player uh, since it was given to me. So. Thank you. Oh, Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. We hope people listen. <laughs> well, with a lot of those bands that I that I have worked with in the last couple of years, uh, especially this summer, I have found kind of a trend of it felt like we maybe got to a point where everyone was trying to do things outside of the box a little bit, and after a while, it kind of started to show as trying a little too hard. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, um, one thing that I find is. When you get back to the core elements of, of rock and roll, and you've got drums, bass, guitar, and vocals, uh, oftentimes the simplicity of that can be much heavier than having just layered synthesizers over mm -hmm. synthesizers, which you know is a little bit of a trend as well. Do you guys feel? Do you see that trend when when you're out playing? Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Well. I mean, most of the bands we play with are dirty rock bands like we are. We don't play with a lot of synthy people. <clears throat> We're informed by, you know, what ends up, you know, through Zeppelin and Sabbath and all that other stuff that we grew up listening to. Like, I mean, that ends up being influenced and informed from Robert Johnson and all those sorts of things. So it kind of makes some sense. You see what I'm yeah, saying? we're not reinventing the wheel by any means. We no. just want to be a great rock band and take from influence, like he's saying, from Robert Johnson to today. I said and didn't say Robert Johnson. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now I... Never mind. Whatever. Um, so, you know, we try to, you know, pay homage to all the great rock music and try to put our own spin on it and be as tight and solid and high energy as we mm. can be. Mm. I really feel like there's a... There's a good energy and momentum behind Meganaut right now. Uh, I've followed you guys for, for years, and this album has, has got me amped. And I feel like you guys really have solid momentum behind you. And uh, you. We're going to try to go back in and do volume two of this. Oh, really? So if everything works out, hopefully we'll follow up uh, what, early summer or something with, mm -hmm. with volume two from this. 2015. <laughs> yeah. So tell, uh, let's let everybody know where they can... So you can buy this today at band, uh, meganaut.bandcamp.com. You can come buy the vinyl right now. Um, we will have it up for sale on our website in the next two weeks. It's being redone. Uh, it's supposed to be done by next week. So ideally, meganautmusic.com, you can buy it. And you can, of course, download this in the first record at uh, iTunes, Amazon, mm -hmm. anywhere you can buy music. You can listen to us on Pandora, Napster. Spotify, I think you can get it at H-E-B. Spotify. <laughs> Just the big H-E-Bs, not the smaller ones, the big ones. And yellow gas stations. We, we put in stations. yellow major brand gas gas stations. And that guy who's going to offer you something out of his trunk tonight, he will have the yes. record too. <laughs> you should pull out your cash. In the corner and... with the ice chest selling waters, he will also sell you our record. Nice. Well, thanks again, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, keep your eyes and ears out for Meganaut. It'll be on tour shortly. Be sure to pick up a copy of their album. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to see the Beatles in, like, a private room. Yeah. You're it's not great. the queen of England. Well, I'm saying if this is fucking That's made up anyway, half of them are fucking dead anyway, so whatever. <laughs> uh,